Hey everybody, Rochelle here, and today I'll be bringing you a tutorial about the basics of Git. Hey everybody, what is going on? Today I'll be showing you how to download and install Git, create a repo, and commit, push, and pull from that repo. Alright, so to download Git, you're going to go to their website and click this download link. That will download Git, and then you can just click the executable once it's done and follow the prompts. It's pretty straightforward, and after that, Git will be installed. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you get Git is you're probably going to want to create a repository. You want to start a project, so you're going to need a repository to hold all your code. A repository is basically a directory or a folder that holds all your code that's going to be tracked by the Git version control software. So to create a repo, we're going to use the command git init and then the file name. So here I just do git init new repo. That'll make me a new repository called new repo that I can add code to. Now after you've started working on the code and you've made some changes that you want to save, you're first going to need to add the file using git add and then the file name. From there you'll be able to commit your changes. You're going to commit those changes by using git commit dash a. The dash a tells git to commit all of the changes that have been made during this session. There's another variation which you can use which is git commit and then the path to the file that you want to commit. This will only commit the files that you specify. When you commit you'll be prompted to give a commit message. This will be displayed to everyone who can see the repository and should explain what's going on in this commit so that people have some kind of context as to why the changes were made. After you've had a couple of commits, you're probably going to want to push. Pushing is saving all of the changes that you've made to your files to a remote server so that a lot of people can access them, whoever has access to the project basically. So there's two variations for pushing that are used mainly and those are git push, which pushes all of the branches that you have and we'll cover branching in another video, or git push the remote name, which is origin usually, and then the branch name, which by default is master. So git push origin master will push only the master branch to origin. Once you run this command, it'll push up all your changes so that everyone will have access to them. Next, if you weren't the person who made those changes, you're going to want to pull them down so you can have the newest version of code. And to do that, you're going to use git pull. This will pull all the changes for this branch. You can also do something similar to pushing which is git pull remote name branch name. In this case, it's going to be git pull origin master. This will only pull the changes from that branch. Sometimes git pull won't work, and that's because you need to actually set an upstream value, and it's pretty good about prompting you about what you need to type for that, but I'll leave that in the comments below. And one other helpful command that you can use that's not necessary, but something that I like to use, is called git diff. Git diff will show you all of the changes that you've made to the files since your last commit so that you know exactly what you're committing and you can make an appropriate commit message. One other command that I forgot about that's super useful for git is git log and this will show you all the past commits and pushes that have happened in your branch and it'll show you who's authored them as well as the commit messages. So that wraps up this week's video. If you thought this was helpful or want to see some more tutorial videos please subscribe if you want to see some more Git videos, please like this. I do plan on making at least one more advanced Git techniques video where I'll be covering merging, branching, and forking. But besides that, I won't be covering much else. So if you guys do like these, please give us a like and leave me a comment. If you want to see some other tutorials, please don't be afraid to send me a message or leave it in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.